To the cloud. Welcome, everyone. So we are back on Zoom and we're just getting reacclimated uh, to the Zoom. So, hello. Hello and welcome. I'm going to paste the terms of engagement uh, in the chat. Like, I just need a, a minute to do that. Uh, Zoom doesn't let us post as much. So I just got to break it up a little bit. So we'll sort that bit out. Um, but welcome. So um, this meeting is recorded. Um, we uh, kind of work the same way where if you um, would like to raise your hand to participate in the conversation, you're going to find that under reactions and you'll see the raised hand there. Um, and you can also go back in to lower your hands. Um, you, we encourage all of the like emoji things um, uh, to encourage. If you want to weigh in on the conversation, you're going to raise your hand and then just also type, um, put in that chat, weigh in. Um, Madonna's the mod today. And so if you need help, let us know. We do kind of a handoff system. So um, if you take a look at the participants list, it will kind of put the raised hands in order, but don't worry, you know, we'll just reach out to Madonna um, and Madonna can call on the next person. It will always put you like yourself at the top of the list. I noticed that. So don't that, uh, that's just how Zoom does it. Um, we are recorded and we do post this uh to our public YouTube page. So if you, you actually have the ability to change your name um, on the Zoom, which is nice. And you do not have to be on camera for this at all, if you do not want to. Um, like I said, this is the only meeting that uh, right now that does get posted to the public YouTube page. And yeah, I can... Um, go into the announcements, which there are um, a bunch of announcements. Um, we are, I'll start with the workshops, I think, first. So we have um, a couple of workshops coming up. We actually have a workshop right after this meeting, um, which is sold out. It's our first workshop that we ever sold out in the history of Bright and Dark. So um, after today, we're going to go right into that Life is Magic workshop facilitated by Jen Marie. And that since that sold out, we've actually posted another Life is Magic, and that's going to be for March. Our workshops are available to everyone, to all members everywhere in Bright and Dark and also to the public. So just know that about the workshops now that um, some of our social media is picking up. You may notice that the workshops do, you know, tend to fill up a little more quickly than they used to. So I just wanted to kind of mention that. We wrote a Boss Witch um, workshop coming up in early February. We've got um, a Tech Witch uh, workshop coming up at the end of February. Um, and we have our first ever um, kind of staycation convergence uh, happening. And so rituals and revelry, which we all have a hard time saying, but I said it the best I could. Um, all of the details and the info is right on our website, brightanddark.org. And you just go to workshops from the drop down and then live workshops. And you'll be able to um, access um, all the workshops and sign up. Um, we do, um, for the rituals and revelry, um, through our shop pay after pay, there's actually some payment plan options. So if that's something you need that automatically, um, is set up in our shop. So you can take a look at that if that's something you, um, you need. So, yeah, so a lot of the workshops front, um, very exciting. Uh, and within our member, uh, foundations program, we have, decided to part way with using the team. So we're on the Zoom here, that's why. Um, and so for those members that are here today or listening, I've gonna, I've been posting, I'm gonna keep posting with the announcements just to make sure we get everybody together. Um, logging into the members area on the website is gonna be really important to just kind of get those meeting links. And so um, 
you will, I posted in the teams how to set your password. So we used to have a code, but it was a little bit confusing and not as easy. So we decided to just switch to a password system. So we've done that and um, everything's in the teams to set that up. But if you need any help, just email us at support at brightanddark.org. Um, in terms of in-person convergences, we're already going to start be, uh, to be planning that. And we still plan to have our in-person convergence uh, for the foundation's members um, in the fall. So just to kind of heads up, if you're thinking about that, just um, to kind of start planning that or saving for that, we, we are definitely still having that um, in the fall time. So more information to come about that. Um, we have been going live. January has been going live um, every day, every day. And that's at 8.30 uh, Pacific time, and which would be like 11.30 Eastern. And so we've been kind of switching back and forth, fa sometimes Facebook, sometimes it's Instagram. So if you want to get your alerts for social media um, to, but notify, but, but it is pretty much. No, we have to do from all right here too. Oh, in the mailbox. Kim, you're not on mute. Hello. Sorry. Um, that's okay. Hello. <laughs> so, um, we, what was I saying? What was I talking about? Did we all just collectively forget what Maria was talking about? I think she's talking about in person. So was it the, yeah, the in person. Yeah, I said that. That's going to be in the fall. And then I thought I was saying something else, but I don't know what it was. Oh, the lives. So, uh, okay, got there. We got back. So, uh, so we, so, so this is fairly new that, um, so feel free to just pop in and basically it's kind of like a wake up with the witches types of situation. Um, and you can see, follow that along on Facebook and Instagram. I have, uh, so for the witches that finish the foundations working, so they finish the 12 months, you don't, that doesn't have to be consecutive, but um, we have this thing called the blanket fort. So just in case like you hear that, I just want to make sure like everybody knows what it is. And basically those witches that have finished the foundations working, um, we've had a ritual that to kind of celebrate that. And um, we have a group called the After Dark. So basically it's like a launching, like to kind of support after you finish your foundations, launching into whatever you might be doing next. And those witches join on the Zooms um, and we call it the Blanket Fort. So that's just what that is if you hear that term. And um, I got a, to been getting a couple questions about the Guild and the Spellcrafters Guild is, um, where we really kind of focus on our magical practice. And that is also for the witches that have finished that 12 months foundation working. And so when you get to that point in your foundations program, just shoot an email to support at brightanddark.org and we can walk you through getting set up to wherever you would like to go next. So that was a lot. Uh, thank you, Jen Marie. I... <laughs> I was in such resistance, guys, to do the lives. Like, seriously, for a good six months. The, I bet the support team was annoyed by the time I finally actually started doing it. Because I every meeting, I was like, man, I really feel called to go live. I need to do the thing. I need to do the thing. It was either that or this, like, you know, uh, issues with video editing in any way. So we started going live. And man, is it so much fun. It's so much fun to hang out with everyone. And if you're not in, uh, if you haven't completed foundations yet, interacting in those lives, you're still all up as a part of what we're doing and getting together and making it a consistent practice to incorporate your magic or your practice in some way uh, every day is so it makes a big difference and not everyone's going to be able to, but that's why I love that they record the lives. So anytime that you have that like 45 minutes to like check in, you can like watch the live anyway. So very cool. 
I love that so many of you guys uh, show up for that. And, uh, oh, I had this like little, not vision, but I get this like little imagery or whatever, because we're leaving teams, a little back history, guys, we have done this migration thing a few times, um, uh, since the founding of Bright and Dark, uh, we're trying to find an online platform that meets all of our needs as this like growing, uh, international community of witches uh and we have a lot of, we have a lot of needs we're needy and we're okay with that and we just haven't found something that worked for us yet we are looking uh but until then we're going to be taking advantage of every possible way that we can stay connected with you guys uh so uh yeah yes we're going to get better and better and better and better at this. And it's not going to stop us. It's only going to improve us. And we've already got some ideas on like what, what we're going to be doing. I'm going back and forth whether to say, okay, so, all right. Okay. I'm going to just say it. So the beginning of this month, Kim and I did a thing. We totally did a thing. Uh, we were having this like conversation about because coming out of hermit mode, coming out of the months of like November and December, all of this like deep introspective stuff uh, is a is a whole experience. And no matter how long you've been practicing, it is a whole experience every year. Every new sun that you greet carries some some different like journey. And this sun has a really strong choice point energy of like uh, deciding what reality you want to participate in kind of stuff. And that's big. That's a that's a intense uh, thing because the the feeling of this choice is like almost like revolutionary kind of like big energy. Like it it feels like there is. Uh, life as we know it is hanging in the balance of whatever decision that we each individually make kind of a, a thing. And when the human experience is really fucking hard and we can't, we can't see all of the picture and it's really like scary to make decisions. And a lot of times your spiritual journey feels like a trust fall. It feels like you get to this point where you're like, ah, you know, I have to like trust what I feel in my heart or trust what the world has always, you know, has told me. Right. And so Kim and I were, were, this is, uh, when we were at the resource center in the midst of all of this, like communication chaos and like half of the members were having a hard time staying connected and getting into our tech and all of that. And so Kim, uh, Kim and I were like having this conversation. I was like, you know, Kim, it's it's uh it's not a bad thing to ask for a sign. You know, we kind of do it all the time when we're communicating with our guides, like, oh, show me a sign that I'm on the right track. And you know, send me a fucking butterfly, right? Which is great. That's great. But we're also allowed to step it up too. We're allowed to be like, hey, all right, universe, I got a big decision and I need some big like obvious signs that this is the path that I need to be on because I got a lot, I feel like I got a lot at stake here and the decision that I'm making is not only going to affect me, but it's going to affect my kids and my partner and my home and like my life and all of this stuff. It's a lot of pressure. Right. And so if we're asking our guides for the little, likes, you know, breadcrumbs through the forest, uh, why are we not asking for big signs, right? And so we had this whole conversation of like, why am I resistant to doing that? And there's so much of our social condition that's like, you know, asking for a sign is a bad thing. You just have to trust that it's going to like, everything's going to be okay. And if, and the more like spiritual and trusting you are, the more like, right? And so we fully were like, fuck this, we're going to ask for a sign. And so we did, we went into this like meditation. We're like, all right, universe, 
we need a sign. We need a sign that that we're right about this is the year that it's it's that making this choice and trusting our magic and trusting that this big thing that we're feeling called to do in in the work that we're doing with bright and dark, uh, that this is important and that these sacrifices and these these like because you know it's a lot of work like what we're doing here is is a lot of work and a lot of us on the support team really dedicate a lot of ourselves to this work and getting that little like nug and you know uh getting that little nugget of reassurance uh sometimes we need that sometimes we need that spark and so we asked for it and I mean, it fucking showed up, did it not? Like that was like the very next week we sell out in a workshop and then we like all of this other stuff starts happening and everything. And I guess like all of this uh, circle around to you guys are allowed to ask for signs, especially when it's this when you if you feel like you have to make a big decision that there is a lot riding on this decision. It's OK to ask for a sign. And to trust that that's going to show up for you just as much as the little fucking hearts and butterflies show up for you, you know, as breadcrumbs to your path, you can ask for a goddamn neon sign. Because, like, the universe knows what you are experiencing. The human experience is really hard. You've got a blindfold on. You're, you're, you're doing your best trying to reconnect, trying to align, trying to, to do your thing. And sometimes all we have to do is just ask for that help. Right. So boom. So there. Ta-da. Does anyone else have anything else that's on your mind? <laughs> but I can if I keep going, I'm gonna go into like channely stuff because I'm I'm absolutely lit up about what's going on. Um, because there's so much that that you guys aren't aware of that is also happening that is mind blowing all pointing to this work that we're doing. Uh, you guys love the channeling stuff. Like I've also like solidly made the decision to, uh, to do the, um, to seek nonprofit status for bright and dark to actually organize in that direction. The last time we kind of talked to the community about it, everyone was like, no, let's not do it. Like, it's not the right time. And I agree that it wasn't the right time then. But the only thing that I am waiting for at this point is witches that are as dedicated as I am to uh, creating a network of mutual aid for any witch that's willing to do this work that we're doing. Uh, shadow work, deconstruction work, uh, alignment with their authentic selves. And I am, I'm just waiting, just waiting. And it all, that, the, that pipeline of like getting through foundations and all of us like actually talking and sharing each other's authentic perspective and getting to know each other's medicine that we're bringing so that we know how each of us fit together in order to create uh, a real support for us, an option, an option other than engagement in what we can't, uh, what isn't aligned with us, right? A lot of us right now, like how many of us are engaging, actively engaging in a reality that you do not support uh, because you don't have a choice or you feel you don't have a choice, Right. We did a, a meditation in the guild the other night where we 
allowed ourselves to actually like experience what our like dream world aligned reality, you know, in your perfect life, you wake up. What does that look like? Right. That dream you're calling that whispers to you, what is it telling you of the your like aligned life? And so many of us, um, well, the guided meditation was was going through this door and stepping out into this space. And the world that most of us stepped out into sounded like the same fucking place. Same place. Um, the same kind of dynamic of uh, it's a communal thing. It's not a you know, living in our little nuclear families, trying our best to survive. It's waking up to, you know, a kitchen full of witches making breakfast for everyone because they are passionate about that, you know, food that we've grown ourselves. Um, participating in the, in life on earth, right? Participating in our own life as well in a way that is authentic and aligned um, herds of children screaming all over the place in the good way screaming in the good way <laughs> hashtag not a cult right um oh my god that was dark i recognize that guys um but seriously though like that's I really, with with my whole chest, know that the work that we're doing uh, in deconstructing our social conditioning, deconstructing that control-based perspective that's been like spoon-fed to us our whole lives, not, not just spoon-fed, we've like had a tube down our throats, right? Um, that is what is keeping us from being able to truly collaborate and truly build this world together um i've seen it right I, i've started communities before i've done the thing i've done that and every time the thing that crumbles it all down is that need to control that need to like be the one that knows everything that like every single time it's this control-based perspective that kind of crumbles things and we can do so much and we're getting there we're on that track um and i could not be more thrilled to be doing this work with all of you guys i can't imagine i can't imagine uh, bubbles. Oh, do I get to call you bubbles now, Morgana? Like I would like to. That is what I named my phone. I did not realize that um, that's what it was left on. Okay. Um, You talked about knowing each other's medicine and each other's, you know, ways of doing things. And honestly, the thing holding me back from other people knowing that on this platform is capitalism. Um you know, some months it's a stretch to have my foundations membership. Um, so to add, you know, you know, another membership on top of that for spellcrafters, I'm like, Ugh, can I or can't I? Um, 
So I'm like fully on board. I'm like, that is what I want in my life. That is, I want to take all this knowledge that I've learned healing myself and help other people heal themselves not not do the work for them show them okay these are ways you could do this these are examples of things you could do and i'm happy to hold your hand through it as you do it and and doing that in community um a lot of the wounds that people carry are communal wounds and communal wounds a lot of the times need to be healed in community um so you know the two are synonymous and um as a queer person as a person of low income, as a disabled person, um, you know, within capitalism, community is essential for survival. Um, and, you know, with where I'm at currently, I'm like, okay, my next step needs to be within community. Um, that's what I want to build. That's my happy place. Um, you know, and the most important part of that for me would be people who are spiritually aligned with me. So, yeah, I'm like, you're speaking my language. These are things that I've been like thinking and dreaming about for years. Um, these are things that I've been working toward independently. Um, communi communicating these ideas and collaborating on the these ideas. Again, we get to that, that catch of capitalism where things get structured around, you know, where we kind of have to gatekeep the we choose to we choose to gatekeep things behind like a paywall. And then, you know, some people get left out. And um that's where I find myself a lot. Um, um I was actually thinking, yeah, because when the ticket price came out for the online conversions, I was frustrated. I'll just say it. I was like trying not, I was like, I'm going to like let this slide for a couple of months, but I'm like, it's on my heart. I'll just say it. So I was like, maybe. I just need to, by example, show what I want to do. I'm just, I just thought of it yesterday. So I'm not like, okay, I'm going to do this thing. But I, I know what it looks like to do it communally in an egalitarian manner. Um, you know, that's communal. I know what that is. I've participated on many levels. So, I don't know. Maybe it's my place that I, like, develop that. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's my two cents. Thank you, Morgana. Uh, 
Renee, one thing I do want to uh, clear up the the workshop in February is not a convergence. That's a it's a workshop retreat, um, and I think and for some reason that's highlighted that that gets that that is distinguished or that that is like pointed out that we're going to have a lot of these like staycation retreats and too, but the convergences are kind of a different beast. Um, and I, I, uh, I hear you. I hear you, Morgana. I do. Uh, Renee. Hi, I know. Um, I know that tech witches are already super busy. Sorry, my puppy. Um, but I was going to ask if, you know, there's some of us have a little latte money, a little extra. If we could have like a pot that we could donate to maybe to help some people that have a little fi more financial need. Um, and I just wanted to say too, as someone who's a former business owner, like it is frustrating like I had a coffee shop and I gave all my friends free coffee. I mean, like it, it is, it's a, it's a hard thing, but I mean, you also have to keep the business afloat and there are real costs to that. And um, so I, t I totally understand, like it's, it's just, it's a hard spot to be, but like I said, for some of us that maybe are a little like, like, you know what I said? Like for me, it's like latte money for the month. Like I would, I would happily donate to a pot to kind of like take the burden off some of my cousins so I'm gonna unmute and that topic of uh scholarship has been since day one day one that has been something that has come up constantly and because of the way that the business is structured right now we can't take donations like that and we would have to have a team of people deciding who gets those donations, how is that structured? Uh, and so it takes a lot of back end work that we, because we can't take volunteers either, uh, we don't have anyone that can do that, even if you guys are willing to to do that. So we've had uh, like people within the community, raise funds for each other and doing that kind of like mutual aid stuff that we're wanting to get toward. Um, but again, that that's one of the major reasons why we're making this transition. And Alaska specifically has very, very strict rules regarding volunteer work and things like that. And so I uh, this is why the nonprofit's so important. We need to be able to function in that way. It's it's vital. It, it's completely aligned with what what all of our hearts are, and what the future of Bright and Dark looks like. Uh, so we're we're getting there, and it is incredibly frustrating uh, that we can't just be like woo because that is that's what we want to do. Um, Oh, there was something else. Oh, also, you don't have to be enrolled in both foundations and the guild if you've completed foundations, Morgana. Now, you don't have to do both. You can just do the guild. Um, and I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Uh, and Morgana, you being in the guild keeps you in the blanket fort too. So you, you don't have to do all of it uh karen i seen melanie had a weigh-in did you still have a weigh-in melanie or was it covered or is she not in here anymore oh i no i'm here i think jim already okay. covered it i was so okay. okay no problem okay karen i'm so sad that bubbles left okay i digress <laughs> It was very. Hi, I'm Karen, the Rising Phoenix, the witchy bitchy barista at the Witchy Way Cafe, and it's free. It is free for members, graduate members, and if you're a member and you get into the cafe, 
I'm not a tech witch. If you leave bright and dark, I don't know how to kick you out of my cafe yet. I'll find a way if necessary. I hope not, but I will, and it's free. I love having all you guys in there. And it's like, I love this community. It's ebbed and flowed with me for three years now. There's times where I'm head over heels in love with this community, community. And then other times when I've had to look at my shadow and other things and the frustrations that we've had go on in the last three years. But I, as we're making all these new changes and new things are, it's always changes. Nothing is ever set in stone at the foundations program or bright and dark or with any of us, just as soon as you think, you know, when and how it's going to work, well, it's going to change up and thank God we have Maria that's going to let us know when it's changed to. So you know, Morgana, I would love it if you would pop in the cafe, hang out, you know, and any of you have the capability, again, because I don't know how not to let you guys yet, you can start meetings in there. If you have, you know, and want to, I don't have to be in there. If you want to just, you know, jack your jaws with each other, you can all pop in there and start your own meetings and hang out and talk about witchy shit and be nice to each other, share the love. And it's free for now. But you mentioned latte money. I can put my, I will be putting my Venmo in there. And if you guys would like to, it's like a virtual tip jar. I'd be happy to take some of that latte money off your hands. I love you guys. Thanks. Silver, you're up. Uh, let's see. I wanted to say thank you to Morgana. I know that uh, that's, I'm also like a, a broke person. <laughs> um, you know, I'm like in the process of and have been for the last couple of years trying to get on disability. And so I'm literally like, you know, unable to make money even you know, if I were able to like get like a part-time job, there's like not much I can do. Um, and so there are some things that, you know, are unavailable to me. Um, and I also, I often think about that, but I think also the community has tried to, you know, uh, to make things as much as possible um, available. Like there's lots of different little things and it's something I've been struggling with too, because, um, Ocean and I are trying to, or have been for like the last year, create a gender magic workshop and we're almost done with it. Um, so like low key, <laughs> like, um, uh, which we call it like advertisement for that, but like we, and we're really excited about it, but, um, and back and forth, I've like, we've both been like talking about like how much to charge for it and like, um, in my, and I like my heart wants it to be free so bad, <laughs> but then I have to keep on like, I have to remind myself that I don't live in a post-capitalist world yet. <laughs> um, like I have to bring myself back there and um, I view it in like a, almost like accommodations type of way um, like accommodating myself in a world where I am not free yet. And that means that I literally am not, I, I can't, I'm not free. <laughs> like, so I can't, like, if I've been working on something, you know, for a long time and like valuing myself, um, in that way. And I think, uh, that's hard to do when you have like a, um, ex yes, exactly. If you work too much, you can't get on disability. And I have a, you know, weird one where I kind of go back and forth between being like completely bedridden and then able to get up and, and do something. So it's a very hard, um, thing to prove, but like, you know, I have, I've left a lot of a paper trail and everything but, and doctor visits and all that but um yeah it's it sucks to live in that world a little bit sometimes and I you know I've talked about this before here I know there's a lot of new people though so like I'm you know working on my money block um and at some point I realized when I was a uh, that 
I decided money was bad and I shouldn't have it. And so the block was more like a shield. It was like, oh, money's bad. So you can't have it. <laughs> like, and it's like, and it was like protecting me from that because I had that belief. Um, and I think, you know, as we go forward and as we, uh, oh, it says my connection's unstable. Hopefully you guys can still see me. You guys are still moving though. So um, the, as we continue, I think, and all of us start, I think, um, we're going to be branching off, you know, and doing our own things. And there will be various, you know, levels. And I love the idea of a tip jar because that, you know, in my mind, like, um, I want to be doing gender magic for a long time. Um, and, and various parts of it are going to be free. And I think parts of it, you know, obviously like the intensive workshop parts are going to be, you know, uh, not free <laughs> and the but then in the future i would like to have meetings like um kind of like we have sas sas mass and stuff that are like open weekly things um and then you know tip jar money <laughs> like whatever you can so then that has gives us the opportunity that people that have like i think renee was saying like people that have a little extra money but not may not have like extra time or you know, or whatever, um, you know, we use as trade, uh, they can offer a little bit more. And then the people that who are, you know, like me that literally have no money to spend pretty much like, then we can work on like an individual basis to figure out, you know, um, they can figure out what they can spare that day. And, and it'll be like a sliding scale um, type of situation. And I think that's probably where all of um, online uh, information, you know, uh, groups and stuff like that is heading toward. Um, and so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, don't, I just wanted to say that because it's something that I think about a lot too. Um, and um, as we transition like through this like late stage capitalism, <laughs> together i think um we'll have more conversations like this and and it'll be like as it as it comes up it'll be like okay what can we do now what what's like the next thing where's like you know the sponsorship or scholarship like what's the what feels right in this moment so thank you guys uh, i think renee was next or Hi, again. So I was gonna say, I kind of think of all of this as art. And, and as someone who also makes part of their living as an artist, um, just as I'm sure a lot of people do here, we often undervalue what we do and underprice what we do. And um, what we're doing is valid and important. And the other thing about um, sometimes if something's free people yeah. don't value it uh like a free newspaper or a zine you know like they don't value all the hard work that went into it and um so i think it's uh in a way you know um for like a zine you know you're you're investing in that and you're showing that you do value what the artist has done and um so uh, again, when someone works on a workshop and puts a lot of hard work into it, um, I know, I think it's like, there's a lot of us who just want, would love it to do everything for free, but it just is like, practically it just doesn't work that way. Um, so um, I have guilt about it too. And I just want to tell people we shouldn't, we shouldn't feel guilty and we shouldn't undervalue what we do. And I'm going to pop up that. I love this conversation so much. This is literally my life's work kind of conversation. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've founded nonprofits before I've done this community kind of, I've, I've done this before. Um, and I'm, that is my heart. My literal retirement plan is to, uh, 
to take over an old nunnery and transmute the energy and turn it into a neurodivergent witch community like that that is where i see myself in you know 10 years or whatever um and i t- completely know that there's going that's one of many of them uh one of many communities that are connected uh doing this work within uh mundane communities even us being witches giving an option uh of support that is connection based right uh this uh transition to a nonprofit that's going to allow us to have volunteers and allow us to raise funds for scholarships and offer even more um things at low to no cost like that that's ha- it's already going in that direction but that doesn't mean that you guys need to be hogtied from doing that like i said there have been other times where uh one of the witches in in the community has been like hey so and so is really struggling let's raise some you know anyone want to put together whatever on a paypal and then they distribute that there is nothing holding you guys back from doing that and creating a scholarship fund that is community raised and community distributed and you guys can decide how that that does that it wouldn't necessarily be affiliated with bright and dark like we're not running it but you guys can do that on your own um if you you organize and um so there's where there's a witch there's a way we can get created just creative just because bright and dark as a business can't do certain things it doesn't mean that you guys as individuals and members of the community can't rally and do stuff um and uh also i got that little like tinge in the back of my head when morgana was like maybe i need to do it you know to do this thing maybe morgana uh is a part of what we're doing at bright and dark heading toward this nonprofit with all of their experience there's it is no chant like small it is not insignificant that you are involved in what we're doing here at this community at this time uh in this place with all of the like huge well of information and experience you have um, go ahead maria um also as part of what we're doing in the, in the after dark <clears throat> you may have those of you been on her jen marie like shout out Um, Rising Phoenix and shout out Roxanne and we only do that for people that have completed the foundations working like at this juncture we spent like a lot of time discussing as a community about like that stuff but like who we partner with and things like that and um, right now through the data that we have at this point we feel you know comfortable with that and and so if you've completed your foundations working and you're working on something where we can talk about that as a community is in the blanket fort too and so just i just wanted to throw that out there if even if you're just uh like thinking about doing it and you just want a community of people to talk about with we are all like excited to kind of do that and that's like what we mean by like launching like what you're launching into what you're doing like you've done all the shadow work all of this you know, um, practice with your craft and and the magical connection-based magic and how that all kind of ties in together. And yeah, that's all. Thanks. And this, this work changes you. It changes you. It changes the, the way that you look at the world. And when foundations, when you complete foundations, I actually said this at the launching, uh, the launching ceremony the other night of I'm so glad that this isn't a graduation and you guys are like leaving and doing this like other stuff. It's a launching and we're staying connected to support each other through that launching, whatever it looks like. Uh, Some are going to be called to, you know, take courses with other organizations and explore different parts of your practice and we can still stay connected through that. This isn't a like a one and done kind of a thing. And the uh, 
when you guys do launch into your path and you're like, you know what, I want to, my path is to be a professional tarot reader. And I have this like online, you know, this website that I do readings and blah, blah, blah. After dark and the lives that we do and everything, we want to promote you in doing your thing. We want you to be able to support yourself and your life as a witch and talking about that and sharing our resource and platform for all of those that have, you know, um, committed themselves again to this connection and this community building stuff. We want to support you in that, whatever it looks like. Um, and that's, that's something that we know that we can do right now. Like we know that uh, with the business structure and blah, 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 of how bright and dark is right now, we can uh, we can support you guys in that way. And we're, again, only moving toward doing it better and better and better. And that uh, decentralized approach is so important. It's so important that it's not just like, all of us under the same umbrella. It's all of us doing all of our own things and connecting and supporting each other in all of our own things. Right. I had something else. There was something else. Oh, one of the familiar feeling, right? Okay, back in my 20s, when I first started really doing community work, like my dream was to like leave the city behind and go with a bunch of friends and buy a piece of property and start our whole like collective community. Like that was the dream, right? Uh, and I did that. I did, you know, I, I in a lot of ways I did that. And even my moving up to Alaska and trying to like run for my calling and to just like hide in Alaska and not, not do community work, right? Not do this thing that I am so passionate about. Uh, if think about what, what would have happened if I decided to stay in my hermit mode in Alaska and not follow my calling. Like that one choice, that one day of my daughter saying, hey, mom, look at this is TikTok, <laughs> right? Like those little choices matter and we don't know what they're going to lead to. And if all of us left, if we went through our, you know, dark night of the soul and we found ourselves and we got connected and then we just go off, off grid, start a community. Like what about our cousins that are still, you know, navig trying to navigate the mundane world and not remembering who they are. They don't have any contrast. They don't, they won't have anyone to uh show them that we can do this we can we can be our authentic selves and live well right if we all leave which you know and, and we get it right it's hard this is hard to navigate a world where we are not understood and we are not accepted we're rejected constantly all the time just for existing that's really hard right but when we're together when we've got like there's a reason we move in packs guys <laughs> and it feels comfortable like much more comfortable navigating mundane spaces when there's several of us right because we get to like fix our reality we are creating a right reality just being around each other and that like I guess I'm stepping down off of my soapbox now. But I love that we're talking about that. Can we like moon? How would you guys feel? 
about uh, kind of allowing ourselves to feel that ideal space, right? That ideal reality of what is your, what would your world feel like if you were accepted as your authentic self, celebrated even? I mean, what does it look like? What would that ideal wake up, start your day? What does that look like? How long has it been since you've allowed yourself to do that? A lot of us that have experienced things like abandonment trauma or things or lost things that were very close to us, uh, we withhold allowing ourselves to feel true joy and bliss because what if it gets taken away again, right? That we can't handle that feeling of loss, right? So we just hold back a little bit. What would happen if you just let yourself feel it? Head, Jenny. Um, you were talking about just let yourself feel being the positive and the happy, and I know that for me, I have pushed happy away for so long that I'm not positive. I really know what real happy feels like anymore. Um, I'm always the one I try to just laugh through it all and be giggly and, and make myself appear happy and make myself appear okay because there are people around me that need me to be like that. Um, but some days... It's just too much, and I'm not sure I know what the real is and what the what the pushed is anymore. So that's my struggle lately. I know that I want to share the gift that I have for making people happy by feeding them. <laughs> I know that I want to share that gift. I just don't know where it fits in. And that makes me sad because I can't figure that out. Along with my mundane life to fit in all of that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Some days it feels like it would be cool to run away to a forest and hide. I kind of like that idea, Jemory. <laughs> and then, you know, I know that that's not feasible. So we go on and I, when Davy died, um, people used to say, you're so resilient. I hate that. Because I am exhausted from it. So to me, it's not a positive. I would like to not be resilient. <laughs> I would like to crawl in bed and never get out sometimes. But those are the hands that were dealt. And so we go along with them. And you try to make the best of it. But sometimes it does get ahead of you. So... That's kind of the way I feel. I mean, my perfect, yes, I would feed, I would feed everybody that walked by. I would give them a piece of cake and just to watch them smile. Or I would, you know, a tea, just 
because it's weird tea and it it it's funny looking or you know something like that and that's that's where i see my giftings making other people happy with what i can feed their soul as well as their body Thank you, Janeline. I uh, it sounds like I need to dial this in just a little bit more. We are not bypassing our emotions and focusing on our happy place. Fuck no. No. <laughs> and a lot of us, you're right. Like, I don't even remember what happy is. It's been so long. Or I have masked happy for so long, I don't sincerely experience that. Um, if that's the the case, if you've masked happy for so long that you don't remember the feeling signature, you start with small pieces. You start looking for the little like, oh, this is what happy is, right? Because you can't find it. What we tend to do is we're like, oh, it's been so long. I just, um, I can't do it. And then it puts us in this like powerless cycle. Just start small, look for little, little nuggets. Don't give up on that. But also, we're not focusing only on the happy. What we're doing is uh, envisioning if you woke up, Jenny Lee, uh, in your ideal life, like it is ideal space, you woke up and it sounds like for you, that would be I'd wake up in in a kitchen that smells like vanilla and mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, a community of people around waiting for like cakes and I'm, I'm baking cakes and chatting and talking to everyone and sharing space. That is what you're sitting in and allowing yourself to feel. Does that make sense? Yeah. That yeah. That's right. That is what, that is what happy and joy feels like is right. that thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. I'm going to jump off now and let Morgana jump on. There we go. Um, well, it, when I was, was first coming out of like a very, very difficult mental health place, um, one of the things that came up was, you know, we had this exercise we did every week um, that required like thinking ahead and planning. And I was like, at one time I was like, I don't know how to dream. I forgot how to dream. And it was a gradual kind of baby step kind of process of noticing things that brought me joy on a daily basis and expanding on that and continuing to find other things that brought me joy and then finding things to look forward to that brought me joy. And then looking further and further forward and being like, oh, wouldn't this be nice? in the future. And before I knew it, I was like, without fear, looking forward and being like, oh, okay, a positive future is possible. Um, I just wanted to throw that out there. And um, recently, I lost somebody really close to me. And a lot of the grieving resources don't resonate with me um, because they state things as like the permanence of loss. And I don't view emotions as static. They're, they're transitory in my view, they, they pass through you, they, they, you don't hold on to them. Um, so, you know, 
I may feel feelings of loss. I may feel feelings of mourning, but they're not, that's not what I am. And, you know, it's not like I can look at my arm and there's this big tattoo that says mourning or loss. Um, there are feelings that I feel at that time. Um, so feelings of, you know, it, and I apply that to like all of my feelings, you know, and, you know, if it's, if it's a pleasant feeling, I do my best to like maintain it and stay in it, you know, but if it's an unpleasant feeling, I understand that it's there for a reason too. And I don't ignore it either. And, um, you know, that coincidentally applies to my magical practice too, because, you know, feeling those things in the spiritual and the, in the energetic, you know, I understand that those things are transitory as well. And being more sensitive to all those things allows me to be more sensitive and more intuitive in all those ways. So that got a lot more esoteric than I thought that I meant. So there you go. Bonus content. Renee? Yep. Oh, all right. I got it. Um, I was going to say, uh, I think there's, sorry, my puppy's, I, my puppy's actually autistic and she, if her schedule gets too out of whack, she gets grumpy. Um, there, there's things I've done in my life that I feel like are uh like for kind of an ultimate purpose like I'm a book hoarder like I have an insane library so in the retirement community I would like to offer my services as a librarian and I bring my books with me um also I've always uh even like crafts I don't do I've always wanted to have like a like a maker space or like a craft space so i I, I have tools I've never even used, but I just feel like I need to have them on hand if somebody comes over and wants to like weave something, you know, for instance, but, uh, and then uh, this is a little off topic, but it was something I wanted to bring up um, because I think it's kind of fun if, and I'm kind of curious about people if they would like to talk about it. Um, I, you know, like when you're with your friends or your coworkers and, They'll be like, your superpower is this or so-and-so superpower is this. Um, I was just wondering if anyone has ever had someone they didn't know come up and tell them what their magical power is or had other people tell them what their magical power is because um, I have had that happen and I'm, I'm going to hold off and not talk about myself, but I would, I know, sorry if I'm changing topic, but if anybody has um, something along that lines they'd like to share, I'd love to hear it because I think that stuff's super duper fun. And I think sometimes other people can see something in you that you maybe don't see yourself. Um, I think Maria Lambert wants to weigh in on that real quick. I'm gonna mute myself. Hi, so I, the answer to your question is yes. Um, also, I've found myself having the feeling of aggravation when it happens because I'm like, you didn't ask me if I wanted you to do that. <laughs> and so like, as like the, as like pre for practicing like consent now, like heavily for the last couple of years. So like, yes, that happens. And we we're actually talking about this in the guild too. We had like a whole conversation, very interesting about like, when you pick up on things, just cause you're walking around a magical being and you're going to pick up on things, but like, you know, like that's just going to happen. And then it's like, when to dig in or, and but because so like yes that's happened but I like right now and so I'm exploring like why does that frustrate you and I know why one reason why it frustrates me is because 
I do like to be asked. I just don't like, I prefer to not blurt it out. And I also found myself like being doing the same in return, you know, where like sometimes I would have just walked into a room and be like, you're sad and you're happy. Oh, and you're like clairvoyant and have a nice day and walk out of the room, you know, <laughs> but I don't do that anymore. And just kind of let, you know, like people either want to exchange with you in that way or they don't. So I think that's an important part of it. So I hope that um, Renee, I like kind of side quested a little bit. I hope that was okay. Yeah. I was, I was just going to butt in it too and say like, I'm a super extrovert, like when I'm with people too. So it's been hard for me, like the whole, I'm trying to be very conscious of consent as well. Because like, so also like, if you see something in someone, like you get kind of excited about it and you, you know, but yeah, it, it's a, it's a pretty wild thing, but um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I that, I think it's cool. I think it's just kind of like having that initial conversation and being like, Hey, like I'm kind of vibing on this. Like, are you interested in this conversation? And I find always that too is like also that it helps like the whole then exchange after that seems a lot more like engaged too. Um, also, um, I get, I'm going through like all, everything that annoys me is coming up this like couple week like but so here we go but um like another thing that um oh sorry train crashed a little bit we were talking about that and we were talking about um what annoys me oh that's so um like so my perspective is that everyone has everyone on the planet every being has like giftings. And I know that there's like a sorting out bit and we can engage with our giftings. And if you engage with them, like you might get better at, um, or you just engaging with them more, you'll, you'll, it's like a learning process. And by doing that, you know, like, so when I, you know, practice jewelry readings, you know, the more I do it, like kind of the faster I could tune in with it, like those types of things. But like, the some like the kind of where like some people can do it and some people maybe can't do it and like my perspective is like we all can do things it's just like what's your flavor of it but this like on the on some of the other social media sites it just seems like people searching for answers and going to people where they feel can give them answers but I'd rather for me I'd rather empower the person to find their own answers rather than just being like I'm psychic and I can tell you all this information like just for me like that no longer interests me like yeah. I like to support you and um like whatever it is whether it's like self-esteem or just empowerment or encouragement or support and then like and also that's just like a beautiful thing. If you're on, if you're able to engage with someone in that way, like that's to me is like the best ever. Um, yeah. You know Flex what I mean? Yeah. Go ahead. A lot of flexing that goes on. I've noticed yeah. on media, like people pretending to put out candles with their eyeballs and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, and that, I mean, that's a magic trick. I, I know that, yeah. you know what I mean? But yeah, there's a lot of weird flexing that goes on on social media that frustrates me too. Cause I'm just like, Oh my gosh, like, please stop. Yeah. <laughs> but, but Renee, like to like validate, I also want, I also like fully understand when you're excited about something and you just want to share it. Like, so I get that too. Like, and like when I really, when I learned about manifestation, cause I thought I knew how to do that and then realized I didn't and cried about it a lot. And then <laughs> realize how to do it I was like I need to tell everybody how to do this you know and then I was like I was really overexcited about it and I just wanted to share it with everyone and I was like okay like wait for someone to ask you you know or or if you're like feeling like that's where the conversation's going like ask hey would you like like to I, I kind of learned something about this would you like to know it and I think what we like what we've tried to do here which I really appreciate is is that there is different perspectives like there is so many ways to do it it's just like what way do you want to and then I think the other big piece with all of that is just like learning like uh engaging and using discernment you know and like and I think that 
ties into with like to, um, you know, like repairing or repairing or um, your relationship with your intuition or just um, um, engaging with that relationship with your intuition um, and, and beyond, ju- you know, other things. So thank, thank you. And I went on a side quest, but I appreciate you. You're great. And Renee, I too, like, wanted to say, I like really appreciate all of your comments and everything in the chats and stuff. Like I'm really engaged and just love reading everything and Carrie too. And so I just wanted to say that while I had the chance. All right. I like, so I, like, I do love the excitement. So like, please keep it coming. And we're all clumsy about it too. So like any, everything I just said, like, that doesn't mean don't say the thing. Cause that's like, that's like the purpose of why we're here in bright and dark to like work like through it together and to get like feedback in a compassionate way. So like ask the question, definitely say the thing. Okay. Ocean. I hope we're learning the zoom, but I hope ocean is next. I'm going to assume that I am for, um, yeah. Anyway. Um, so I'm going to bring us back to picturing ideal reality because um, my brain was kind of stuck on that. Um, So I love Maria's phrase, I'm open to the possibilities that I cannot imagine. And so when I'm picturing my ideal reality, um, every time I've ever tried to do that up to this point, it's always been from a place of trauma and what my needs were because of the trauma that I experienced. But as I am more consistently meeting my own needs and am feeling a lot more like neutral about like that desperation of like, there's this thing that I need really bad that I don't have. It's, it's hard to like I I have things that I want and there are still things that I need I'm not saying my life is perfect but it's it's hard to picture my ideal reality when it's not coming from a place of need does that does that make sense I would love um if anybody had any thoughts on that go ahead silver Can you repeat the last thing that you just said? I didn't know there would be a test. Um, ooh, uh, I said, I don't know how to picture my ideal reality when it's not coming from a place of like need. Well, thank you so much. I didn't mean to tell you I was just like I wanted to respond to it and then it slipped out of my brain (laughs) so um yeah I think that's we're so like programmed to um because of because of trauma like our experiences you know kind of create our programming um the our minds tend to be limited based on our experience that's why I get so many people you know like I so many people like will just one of the things that brought up for me was like the two-party system (laughs) um and how like essentially like I was having conversation I've had a couple of different conversations with people and they like the either or like it doesn't even cross their mind that there is something more than that like and and then that happens in a lot of different ways it's just like a or b there's not there's nothing else (laughs) um and um our i think like trauma like uh ends up disabling our imagination in order to keep us safe um and the one of the things that i was thinking about it before but this is actually kind of related um what some one brought up uh the difference like negative and and positive feelings and thoughts and I've always felt because of my own like vocabulary bias that I didn't 
love those those terminology that terminology like um negative seems to imply bad and positive seems to imply good and those are judgments and um it leads to you know people not wanting to feel bad emotions and um the way that it was described to me uh recently was positive being inward like drawing things inward like receiving things and negative being pushing things outward um like you know saying no and and uh i'm not interested and in, and just you know uh like an arrow pointing away from you versus an arrow pointing inward basically and which i think is why gratitude uh practices work so well because when do you experience gratitude when you received something and so it automatically like shifts your whole energy into a receiving mindset but um and we mentioned like spiritual bypassing before because both negative and positive both inward and outward is part of being alive like that's the breathing process and um that's you know the tides and everything and i think uh when we are traumatized we learn that receiving is dangerous that anything you would like invite in could harm you and so you get stuck in no and you get kind of stuck in negative it's like you're holding your breath inward <laughs> and you're never letting it out um or or actually like i guess vice versa in this <laughs> with this analogy um which kind of gave me like it made me think the word like of asthma where you can only breathe out and you can't breathe in um and when you know you do when we are I'm like, uh, let's see so when we're trying to imagine that the exciting world that we're in that we want to be in um one of the things that comes up for me too is that because we are in some in a lot of ways limited by our physical brain and the injuries that have happened over the course of our life and you know in various ways trauma and conditioning and all that um we can't even imagine at first like what a beautiful like we're limited in like the extent of how awesome everything could be like most people would say oh okay i don't have to pay rent I don't have to, you know, work a terrible job. I don't have like all of these things that are currently traumatizing them kind of. Um, and then, so if they cling to that picture too much rather than the feeling signature of um, the excitement that that world has for them, uh, that visualization is limiting because you kind of put conditions on what the universe is allowed to bring you. Um, and I think one of the things that's been helpful for me is, uh, sorry, um, <laughs> the, just starting with one thing that feels safe to feel joy in, like even if it's something really small, like a, a cup of coffee um, and just trying to sit with that and remember it because um, a lot of times joy is, it's, we're taught that joy like is just the precursor to a letdown. <laughs> and so we're really worried about that. So we won't let us feel the joy, I think. We mentioned that earlier in the discussion too, but like, um, so if you can sit with the smallest of feeling signatures and then let the image of it go, then, because if you only picture that cup of coffee, 
then, and you're trying to manifest that specific cup of coffee, then I think we like, uh, that puts so many rules around what is allowed to bring you that feeling signature of joy that you just had. Um, and so we end up because we're scared, <laughs> we cling to that very specific image. Um, and that's why like, you know, the letting go, the breathing part of it is so important. And I remember when I was first starting to get into like meditation and spirituality, and everything, they were like, oh yeah, like, um, a lot of it is breathing. And I was like, oh, I'm terrible at breathing. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was like, I'm not good at breathing. I used to say that like when I was a kid and we were like exercising or, um, or doing deep breathing exercises or, or anything that had to do like yoga, all that stuff. I was just like, why is it so hard to breathe? Like that's, it's, you'd think it would be an odd, that it's an automatic thing. And I think that has a lot to do with the way trauma just makes you like clench up and refuse to let go. You get stuck on one of the, one of the two, like the inward or the outward when both are necessary for us to move forward and function and have um, the good feelings. Like you have, like, because everything is a wave, you have to be able to um to experience the negative things so that you can actually experience the the positive thing or else uh you kind of just like I was just talking about this yesterday too but like instead of actually just feeling the sadness and letting it pass through you you end up saying no I don't want to feel sad and then you just it just kind of stays knocking on your door the whole time like hey sadness hey sadness hey sadness and that's where you get like stuck in that like loop of of what we would call negative feeling because really what you're doing is pushing everything away rather than letting letting it pass through you um, hope some of that helped some of it i just wanted to say anyway but you did what it did bring up a lot of um a lot of it felt on on ask for what my brain wanted to do anyway so I think Karen Rising Phoenix Matt, I was always that kid that used to imagine everything I had a horse I didn't have a horse I told everybody I had a horse and what its name was how col what it, color it was where it was kept Closest we were is my family was hog farmers. They didn't have any horses, but I could but I could visualize it and see it and spin that tail as a child to and people would actually would believe it. And I because I was it was so clear in my head when I vi visualized the nunnery nursing home for retired witches and you know the crone castle. <laughs> I mean I can visualize it so clear. It's going to be one of those houses on high on a hill that the whole town can see and they know that it's a bunch of crazy old witches. We're going to sit on the porch and there's ferns and herbs everywhere and we'll see the cars pulling up and it almost chokes me up just thinking about it, you know, hollering for wit, you know, because Anastasia's here. She's got the kids and Maria, will you grab Whitney's? Will you grab her ear? ear she needs her hearing aids. Grab, grab those off. I can see it, you know, all of it and feel it. And that's so much the intention and the feeling it. I don't want to sound ableist because I have been very, very blessed. I'm an adopted white child. I was a product of incestuous rape. But, you know, it's, I, 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 I was, I won the lottery when it came to parents and being adopted, but I also love the idea of the secret. And I've also seen, been around people that had so much fucking money that it's like, what the, I mean, it's like the, they're dropping out of their pockets. We were talking about this last night, you know, 
what you know paris hilton loses more in her fucking couch cushions than i made last year seriously it was a bad night you know we wrecked the lotus and speaking of when then all of a sudden a fancy car pops up <laughs> zara that's a beautiful car but yeah that's you know why Paris Hilton is no more worthy or entitled or privileged or just because I happen to the numbers in 1970 matched up with the people that had enough money for a lawyer and needed a baby. I locked into it. I'm not, no, nope, I'm not any better or any, you know, I, you know, there are a million and one ways to make money on this planet. Money is just a tool to get us what we want. It's I and I struggle because growing up and, you know, a lot of my career was spent in sales, you know, think and grow rich, you know, how to be a capitalist pig. <laughs> no, that's I mean, but really, that's what a lot of it is. And that mindset I'm deconstructing because I really think that everybody deserves the luxuries and the Egyptian cotton sheets of, you know, 20 billion thread count and everybody deserves that and you know as opposed to being programmed to well if you work hard enough you'll get it and if you're privileged enough and it's never gonna but i feel like you shut your own magic off when you say that shit ain't gonna happen for me man i'm never gonna have a car as pretty as zara's you know, and <laughs> it really is a pretty car i love that blue but it's you shut I feel like I shut my own magic off because I have watched people go from having absolutely nothing to luck of the draw being at the right place, right time, find a job, come up with one stupid little idea. That's all it fucking takes. It doesn't matter what your physical ability is and timing. I don't know what it is. I don't have the answer. Hell, I've been digging in trying to find it myself for 53 years but I'm not ashamed to say that I want money. I want lots of fucking money. I want to be able to fly down, book the Disney cruise ship for all of us. We'll pick you up, Ezra, or Silver. You know, we're going to, we will all, and yeah, because I want to have that kind of money that I can be able to share and take care of everyone. And I feel like we're, but, so, I mean, getting away from my feelings of money bad, money dirty, money makes, because I've seen money make people do some shit that, you know, but there's plenty of it around. We are fucking magical practitioners. It's energy. It is a tool. How do we, which takes us to the workshop in a couple of hours. Maybe there'll be answers there. That's all I got. Love you guys. I'm jumping in. Oh, jump in. I was like, I can't find the raised hand, but you jump in first. <laughs> so what helped me in my relationship with like money uh, was that I, I took kind of money out of the equation and it wasn't money that I was manifesting in my life it was what I thought money was going to bring me or what money or what in from my perspective financial or or money was the only answer to uh once I opened myself up to the feeling signature instead of limiting it to just money as the thing that was going to meet that need that's when like things show up in ways that you don't expect. Like it's it's constant as long as you're open to however it comes to you. Um, by removing the the money thing, if if money is the only way 
to get the nunnery. It it limits that so much. Like we could be gifted a nunnery. Like we could be, we could inherit one. We could like, there's so many op ways that this could happen. Uh, and it doesn't matter. It's not my business how it shows up. And that's the other thing that uh, I really worked on was it's not any of my business how it shows up. It's my business to maintain the energy signature so that I know, so that it's tethered, right? I am creating a tether for that which I know is in alignment with my calling and my path. And if you are seeing yourself on a fucking Disney cruise with a bunch of witches, like I can tell you a million different ways that that could happen. And it's probably going to be end up happening in a way that I had no idea, didn't, didn't fucking see coming at all. And that's Witchy the one pirates way. found fun. I know. <laughs> we just got to talk to the fucking whales man <laughs> create an alliance we got this <laughs> connection based magic at its finest <laughs> uh, Maria you wanna yeah um, so I, I think t- too it's bringing me back to Ocean's point and about to like in, in connection with this money, just where it's where I'm feeling, feeling it. Ocean, when you were, I wanted to just ask Aishara's understanding, like when you were talking about the being open to the possibilities that you can't imagine yet, but then talking about being your mind kind of focusing on the needs. And I hope that explained that correctly. Could you just say, could would you be open to saying a little bit more about that part about where you're focusing on the need and how, yeah. And then thank you. Thank you for Absolutely. popping up. Yeah, no, totally. Um, I'm having a little smoky smoke and we're recording. So that's why I'm off camera. <laughs> um, and so what I was, what I was trying to get at, thank you so much for um, asking um, is that um now that my needs are more steadily met or are being more steadily met um and i'm uh, like my fe- my feeling signatures aren't um coming from a place of like not having my needs met being like being open to the possibilities, like what does that, I I was like trying to say, what does that mean? And I I love what, what Silver said about the feeling signatures. Like um, it, it does make me question um, whether, okay. So I said something this morning that's coming back up for me and it's, it was, uh, I, there, there is a piece um but I uh what did I say oh my gosh I love the way that I worded it and I'm not gonna remember it but it was like something about like there's a peace coming that I've never experienced before like I will know peace that um like like I have never known before something like that and it's but that really brings up like the feeling signatures that I don't know I want to be open to those like I want to be open to experiencing things that I can't imagine like any part of my system even knows like how good that is. Like I, you know, if we're going to play around with this, I want to test it to its full limits. <laughs> so something that was kind of come, something that comes up for me and I don't know if this is coming up for you is so the first potentially like kind of the first step is to like, okay, so you've already like declared I'm open to the possibilities, but like feeling into imagining what you're like, whatever you can imagine, like your wildest dreams, you know, coming through and then just feeling into the resistance. If you have any, because when we sort through the stuck places and the resistance, because we, we need to match the universes, right. We need to, we need to believe it with all of our being, right? 
And so one potential place to explore that is just to play around with that and then feeling into resistance or stuck places. So then you can process those emotions, work with the shadow work, and then you are in alignment with the, your wildest dreams. Does that resonate? I know it's like, fuck you, more shadow work, but sorry. <laughs> that's what I hated. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. You're brilliant. <laughs> And that's like hard. I feel like we talk about that and, and witches that come into like the magical piece is so exciting. And some of us like may have been doing it or some of us are just finding a community like to be able to do it. And then just like what we're doing kind of here at Bright and Dark is like, is that shadow work piece of it connected to our magic? And so there is like a lot of the inner work and it's hard. Like it, it just is. Um, so it's worth it it's worth it silver <laughs> yeah what that brought up for me is like like doing something like the that's why it's so important that it's like an ongoing you know like yearly like monthly day like daily thing is because every time you it is something that's impossible for us to imagine, imagine right now. There are some times where I'm even like, is this physical brain even capable of imagining it? And I think, you know, to some extent, no. And like, that's why, you know, I think being in touch with the spiritual world and having your mind and conscious, you know, consciousness, soul, magic, you know, um, it it can imagine it. <laughs> you know um but every day when you get a little bit like the best thing that could happen that day or the best thing that could happen that month or the best thing that could happen that year and then as you achieve that thing then you'll your brain creates you know neural pathways that will support the next thing that you could imagine <laughs> and then that then you get there and then the next and then again and again and again and so next year you're going to be able to imagine things that you couldn't even you can't do today and so that's like you know that's the the fun of that's like the the game like at one point you know some every once in a while I will be like why can't I just get to the end <laughs> like you know like the kid that I that I used to be that would like read the last page of the book you know um which is my own thing <laughs> um but i <laughs> what are you saying ocean i was just thinking that like as soon as you said that i was like yeah like reading the last line in the page of a book i used to do that too <laughs> exactly i want to know where it's going and i feel like every once in a while when i'm like deeply meditating i will get a glimpse of it and that will be enough to kind of remind me that it's about the journey um i even used to when somebody brought up superpowers was that renee um but like i used to always say that i wanted teleportation and like that was that was my big I was like for literally since I was a child I wanted teleportation and you know I used to also like vibe with like beast boy a lot and so I mean green hair type of, you know like I still do and so being a shapeshifter also very cool but I'd still above all want to teleport because I'd be like I'd be able to go everywhere and it was and recently I was thinking about it again and I was like I love road trips if I could teleport I wouldn't have to go on road trips. I wouldn't, you know, like, like I love the journey now and literally teleportation is about, it's just destination, destination, destination <laughs> over and over and over again that I was taking away from myself um, in ignoring that journey. And so, um, you know, I, I think it reminds me of like when, what you were also saying about like getting really excited and just wanting to share, you know, sometimes I feel that when I'm talking to someone I was like, Oh, I see exactly what you have to do <laughs> in order to get to where you want to go. And, and then, and then, but that's like kind of rude to point it out to them, I guess. Um, I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm still learning that myself, like when it's appropriate and what to share. Um, and if that person wants to know if they're ready to hear it, 
and if they can even hear you like at all even if you were to say it because I think sometimes I've been noticing ever since I started relating things to being like a radio like as far as like channeling and um not just being in general like some people like they can only hear their frequency and so it is like they cannot hear a single word you're saying like you try to explain yourself and they hear something completely different like it's they're not it's just not there you you can't you know um it's just static essentially between you so yeah um i think i can't i don't remember if it was maria or renee so you guys gotta fight it out uh <laughs> I can't tell because my name's on the top because it's me. So Renee, you can go and then I, I'll go. Go ahead. <laughs> um, just real quick, I wanted to kind of weigh in on something Ocean was saying. Um, there's there's like a flip side of of your experience too, which I feel like is sometimes like a trauma response is you just go deep into the fantasy world. Um and uh so yeah it's just it's so interesting to hear other people's perspectives because um there's there's the deep fantasy world and the maladaptive daydreaming and the just total disconnect from like any kind of association with reality <laughs> which is obviously not healthy but you know um it's uh yeah sorry that was that was that's all <laughs> thank you um, Renee, I think what you said was like interesting. I know we only have like 10 minutes left, but about like the daydreaming and thing, just like things like that. Cause I mostly daydream like most of my day. So anyways, it would be interesting to talk about that at some other time, but I totally understand what you were saying, like where like disassociation and things like that. But I do think there's places too, for that, um, daydreaming, um, what I wanted to just like add and kind of like you know, what Gemma Marie was saying, like, I, like, and as in this conversation kind of came like a little bit of full circle. It's like declaring, you know, uh, declaring the thing. And even if it's, um, I am open to the possibilities, um, that I can't even imagine, like to be more specific about it. Like I may, I may choose to say, and people may have even other, cause I know, you know, we, we know kind of be specific, but in terms of like, I'm open to the possibilities that I can't even imagine that are in my highest, you know, alignment for like my higher self. Okay. So that's wonderful to say that. Right. But I'm a control freak. So then it's like, do you really want that Maria? Because you're not right. Jen Marie said it's none, none of our business how that shows up, but I'm used to planning everything and knowing exactly what's going to happen. And if I don't do that, it's not, my old belief was that it's not safe to do that. So I had to explore my relationship with my safety and my control. That's why my whole last year has been dedicated to like release of control. It's like, yes, I'll work on this journal prompt and control and control and control. Like, because like, but I, you know, so it was okay. Declaring it and then feeling the resistance that am I really open to the possibilities to like see what shows up and like feeling into the, like the knowing yeah it's like you know maybe it's none of my business at how it shows up um and then yes so it like that it's just interesting how that can kind of play out um with, when like we're kind of saying something too that's maybe like not as like not as specific but we just want to like you know continue to like step into like that alignment um it's an interesting I think thing to do Ocean we'll wrap wrap it up with you maybe <laughs> um oh no I got excited and forgot what I wanted to say <laughs> no <laughs> um The, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, so we were talking about the maladaptive daydreaming, um, I definitely struggled with that, well, it didn't really struggle, I particularly enjoyed it a lot growing up, but I have put in a practice this, <laughs> this past couple of months to be more present in my experience, and, and with, like, 
um, people and places. And the more present I am, I have to admit, the more bored I am, the more that I like try to structure it. But it does make a lot of the things that are coming in make more sense the more that I am grounding it. But there is always a part of me that wants to be like in that daydream and like thinking up all these possibilities. But I know that that is a construct because it's I know it's similar or it is the same as what is happening when I'm like sleep dreaming, like night dreaming, like the landscape is. But the, the plots are different because when I'm daydreaming, it's still built out of, out of like, like the, okay, the, the, it's two different things, right? Because there's, there is the existence of the dream, like, plane like the astral plane plane that I can go to but when I'm in a trauma response place that will flavor my whole experience whereas that doesn't really happen when I'm dreaming I don't I don't know if that's even relevant thank you so much for listening to me <laughs> it's all relevant it's all relevant and it's interesting that uh for those of you that are are taking a break and then going into the workshop uh like everything we talked about today is like it's gonna come up and we're gonna go like deeper into it because it it all relates <laughs> this is exciting <sighs> we have four minutes left uh in this space and Can you guys hear the chaos of dog tornado that's happening? Okay, good, because it's very loud. Uh, we have talked about a lot of really cool stuff today. Every sass is this like beautiful cookie of witchy awesome. And all of us add to that recipe. And I... And it's, I find myself sitting in this place of like deep gratitude, which is an awesome place to be. I'm crying a lot. My dogs are a little confused by that, but it's just like, man, it is truly remarkable how much your life can change completely based on a single decision, right? A seemingly un insignificant, an apple today or an orange today. You know, uh, do I turn right here or do I take the shortcut here? There's so many of those decisions that we are presented with throughout the day and learning how to make those decisions, how to you know, repair that relationship with your guides or your guidance system is such a like profound practice. And that is something that we are all doing together. Um, but just trust your gut, do what feels right. You can't make a wrong choice as long as it, it feels aligned, right? All right. Our time is coming to an end. There is the Disney, like, internal musical side of me wants to sing some, like, 10 different goodbye songs just, like, came into my head. It was really great. It was beautiful chaos. So know that my entire internal environment is singing you guys out right now. There's, like, big velvet curtains involved and sparkly costumes <laughs> i am honored to be on this journey with you guys and i'll see those of you going to the workshop in uh in an hour and i'll see everyone else in the morning bye guys